was really ready to leave Wales, and I sort of didn't connect with my sort of Welshness, I suppose. And in the last year, I sort of really want to come back and really want to come write Welsh stories for Welsh actors with Welsh voices. Um, and that's why I'm here to come to my hometown to do to do that. Um, I'm the biggest musical theatre nerd, as I think a lot of us are who are here as well. Um, it was my introduction to theatre, as it is for loads of people as well. And as I've evolved to become a playwright of sorts, to writing about theatre, that's never happened to me. So the chance, firstly, to write a musical is an opportunity not to be passed by for a nerd like me. But also to meet different people within my theatrical community, because we never would have met, or we technically met by email. <laughs> I've talked about that before. Um, but we wouldn't have worked together. Um, and now we've created a thing in however many sessions, one less yeah. thanks to the store. And it's just the chance to get out of the bubble, literally, to drive out of Cardiff and work somewhere else, but also to get out of the bubble of creatives that we work with day in, day out, or don't get to work with day in, day out. So I think that for me was the biggest draw. Can you think of where this yeah. then? So I wrote some notes, I wasn't <laughs> so I read it the first time. Um, we started with some objects, um, some of which were on the table here, and as the first group mentioned with their plug adapter, we have a couple of the objects we worked with. We won't maybe reveal what they were of the ones that you can see scattered around the floor. But we focused on the idea of objects and what they mean to us, and so that became our starting point for the ideas for the characters that we developed. Um, I will say as well that Amelia is not as old a person as she's playing in this musical art. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for clarity before anyone thinks that. But we got to think about objects, the things we hold on to, the things we have in our houses and why. And this kind of linked to the idea of the people we've kept and lost in our lives in various ways. And the mysteries around that and how we hang on to different things. We think this is maybe the first ten minutes. Or a selection from the first half of the musical? Yeah. We don't know yet. Yeah. We'll be interested. <laughs> find out. Um, but it also leaves a lot of unanswered questions, which is deliberate for the purposes of this exercise in terms of we want to figure out where it's going to yeah. go next. There's a cliffhanger. <laughs> um, so Amelia will be playing Pearl, Gethin will be playing John. Emily will be playing housekeeper and stage director, <laughs> and I will be playing the piano. Thank you. 
tickets from the lottery. <laughs> so much of you, Nan. So little of you, Andy. You didn't leave me anything, did you? Nothing to, to hold on to, to touch. It's like you were never here. Except the housekeeper enters. John stands hurriedly, hiding what he was doing. Am I interrupting? No. Oh, well, no, I'm not writing. You are artistic types, do you have a process? I thought talking to vases might be part of it. <laughs> oh, no, no, just, just talking to myself, you know? They don't answer, you know. Vases. You can make a fortune with this stuff. eBay, you can pay a fortune. No, for no, I, I mean, no, I'll, I'll sort it. There's a system we don't want to... And it was now. I don't know what she wanted me to keep. Anyway, found it. <laughs> Back to it. Just a, just a bit of dust in here, maybe. I mean, don't bother with the timing yet. I could help you sort it. I'm quite no, good with... No, no, it's fine. I don't have anything. What I mean is, he went without. Anyway, never mind. We'll just, just leave it. Just, uh, just do the bathroom and, uh, oh, and the kitchen. It's, it's sticky. All right, if you say so. The housekeeper reaches into a box and pulls out a small porcelain cat. She slips it into her pocket. People keep their secrets, well I have a few too. He will never understand what I had to do. Still, he keeps all of this stuff. Nobody knows what they've got until they've lost it. So I'll keep holding on to him. She puts a book down. Right, that's me done. See you next week. She goes. John re-enters. What? What was that? Oh, you're gone then. Honestly, that woman. Sees the book, picks it up, and sniffs it. I know you. I know you. I love the feeling. with a box filled with the small remains of Andy's life. Hello again. Come on, answer me, I dare you. I'm talking to a box. <laughs> again, a box of what? Pandora's box has nothing on you. Of course, you'd make some filthy remark about Pandora and a box, wouldn't you? <laughs> a box, that's all. <laughs> a stupid box of things. Why am I so angry? I it's not like I want things, it's things to dust, that's what Mum used to say. I don't want things, I want...
wearing fox. She flicks through it for a moment, gets lost in it. She's interrupted by the housekeeper entering. They haunt things, even after they're gone. Shit, yes. Is it that time already? Anything interesting? Uh, I don't know. Um, no, nothing really. It's just an old notebook. Right, I'll get out of your way. Uh, why don't you start with the kitchen? Phil goes. The housekeeper takes out an ornament and places it in the box. From the box, she takes the book and flicks through it. I remember you. You were Andy's favourite. Time passes. A week of cleaning and moving objects from house to house. The housekeeper is moving objects from Pearl's house to John's house and back again. All while cleaning, without explanation. Her movement stops. John and Pearl pick up where she left off, both searching through their own houses. John stops and holds up the notebook. Puzzled, he flicks through it. objects fondly once more. Wait a minute, how did this get you? <clears throat> Andy? No, it doesn't make a difference. Bill? Uh, and John? I heard of Andy's man. I, John, I was Andy. She pulls into a hug. I, uh, I found this. On this, I assume this was his, but... <laughs> I, uh, I bought that uh, as a joke. The, the ugliest thing I could find in the charity shop. <laughs> he made fun of my uh, collections of things. I feel like he didn't leave behind anything. No, he never showed me his writing. No, he was a closet poet. And an artist. Talented but. Well, he had so many <laughs> notebooks. Uh, sketchbooks, a piece of paper as a kid. We lost them all, Andy. If I... But I'm glad we, you know. Yes, yeah, me too. I, I, I'm sorry, it wasn't another time. But how did you know? I mean, how did you find this? How would you sort of turn that? Well, so did this. Well, I asked that weeks ago. Well, I, I thought I had. It's, it's hard to tell in my head. But how did I get it? Well, how did I get this? Was it him? Well, logic would say not. Want to hear my theory? They follow each other. The house is so tidy. <laughs> they exit together. Meanwhile, the housekeeper is in John's house. She should be cleaning. Instead, she sat intensely focused on a gathering, almost a shrine of objects in front of her. She 
He hears a noise, she grabs a couple of things and runs away with them. Are you shocked? Well, it's just things. Easy enough to accumulate. Are you sure you want help? Of course. Are you ready? No. Let's do it. 